God, I ask you that you will help us to grasp your word today. I ask you, Lord, um, that you will help me to bring your word today. And Lord, that, that in this moment, you will speak clearly to who we are and change who we are for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I didn't address this in the last two services, but I, I think I'm going to address this in this service. So many of you were so kind to reach out and say um, that uh, you were praying for us while we were in Israel. How many of you saw the news reports of the riots going on in Israel? Did anybody see those? I was there, Ray and Kelly. Would we see any riots? No riots. None. Fifteen people. Fifteen people demonstrated one day. There was someone that uh, had an, there was an incident at a bus stop, which is not uncommon there, one evening, but no riots. How many of you understand fake news? Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Well, I want to deal with you about fake news for just a moment. I, I've come home to uh, quite a bit of fake news. And, uh, uh, and you have to decide if you're going to believe truth or lie. And um, I've had to uh, have really a, a rough struggle for the last few days because I've had to clean up a, a pretty, pretty good-sized mess that I came back to. And I kind of got myself in a good place about that. And I, I thought, okay, we're going to go have church in the morning. And, and I was really, really, really feeling pretty strong when I came in here this morning. Uh, God gave me this message three weeks ago, and it has been burning inside of me, and, and I can't tell you how I've been carrying it for you. And I don't know how, but someone got my private cell this morning and, and proceeded to inform me what a horrible pastor I am. And so that's happened right before I walked in to preach our first service. And so I preached with, with tears in my eyes, uh, just trying to, to figure out, um, one, how they got my number and who I need to have a private conversation with it. Come on, amen. <laughs> but to uh, uh, what's fake news and what's real news. And as I was sitting in my office dealing with that, um, angry, hurt, uh, frustrated, I, I remembered a couple of little facts. I always tell young pastors, if you want to connect with your congregation, just set a mirror up in the front of your stage, preach to yourself, and they'll get it. Okay, that's simple. Preach to yourself, they'll get it. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said, son, read your sermon. And I said, I don't want to read my sermon. <laughs> I'm not preaching to myself right now. Read your sermon. And I, I, I didn't want to read my sermon. It took me about 20 minutes longer than normal to review my sermon. that I wrote, you know, finished this week, but I've had for three weeks. And, and when I read it, uh, my sermon is on how to keep your mind right when your world is not. Amen. Not going to say I enjoyed reading my sermon because I had to bow my head and I had to say God even those that despitefully use us I pray will you bless them and you'll do good unto them and God help me respond and to the one attacking me I, I, I sent the kindest response that I knew how and I said God show me I don't even know who this person is uh, and I've got show me how to love you right here. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. It's how do you love God right where you are when your world's in a crazy place? And I want to bring you a message called A Thrill of Hope. And A Thrill of Hope comes out of Luke chapter number 1 and verse number 46 is where we're going to begin. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 46 says this. Mary responded. Can I just tell you the way you respond affects everything? Let me say that again. The way you respond affects everything. Here's what she said. Oh, how my, I need your help with this. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. At this point, God's speaking to me about that previous verse as I'm reading, but I kept reading. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. How many of you need to understand that sometimes you need to, you need to know right where you fall on the ladder? Amen. It's really all about Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen? And from now on, all generations will call me blessed, not because of who I am, but because of who, who took notice of me. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. For the mighty one is holy. 
and he has done great things for me. Can anyone in this place join me this morning and declare that God has done great things for us? Amen. Mary trusted in the Lord and surrendered her life to his perfect plan. I think that's key. We'll come back uh, to that. And I want you to understand what God is up to today. God has done great things for us. Imagine Mary's world. Mary is in a place to where everything is all about trust at this moment. She's just become engaged to a man. She's trusting him to provide for her. She's trusting him to prepare. There's going to be a wedding. Everything's going to go good. And her life is right where it is supposed to be. Her life is finally on track. Amen. Everything's lined up. Woo! And then it all comes crashing down in a moment. Does anybody know how that feels? You think you finally got the pieces in the right place, and boom, it all comes crashing down on your head. Everything just, just suddenly screeches to a halt. But it's not for a bad reason, it's for a good reason, because all of a sudden this angel, Gabriel, shows up, and this angel says to her, hey, you're going to be called and chosen and used of God to carry the Messiah inside of you. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty powerful. That is amazing that, that God has chosen her. And you know, I think it's real simple what she says to him back. She looks back at the angel and she says this. She doesn't say, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't think this will ever work. She says, uh, can you explain to me how this is going to work? Because I don't have a husband. That's a good response. It's not a doubting response. It's a response that says, I don't know how to make your promise reality, but will you tell me how you're going to make it reality? And can I tell you what the angel responded, and this is what I feel. I feel it burning down inside of my heart, and, and, and I want you to get this. The angel responded, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall conceive that child. When the Holy Spirit does this work inside of you, what you cannot do in yourself, God's going to begin to do in you. Can I tell you today, I've come with a message to tell you, you can't fix your family, you can't fix your world, you can't change your situation, but the Holy Ghost of God can change it all because because when you let him begin to work inside of you, something begins to change. Come on now, amen. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God begins to become part of the equation. The Spirit of God. And that's when Mary said, I, I'm just going to trust you in your plan. Because I can't make it a reality in my plan. But I can trust God that what God is up to is working for my good. Can I tell you, I'm living that this morning. I can't fix things in my ability, but I can declare with you that we can trust the Lord because he that has began a good work in us, he is faithful to carry it through to its completion. Can I get an amen? Come on, give God a, a praise this morning. Amen. You see, she said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be according to me, to me according to your word. Here's what she says. She says, God, I don't want my will, but I want your will to be done. How many understand that's the way we need to respond? We need to respond when we encounter God with, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Have your way. And how do you want me to respond, God? Show me how to be who you want me to be. You see, when you answer God's call, something is going to change inside of you. Something is going to be different. Some people want to play church, and they get church up here. But when you let God get inside of who you are, there's a change coming your direction. Why? Because God allows something to be conceived within you that's going to move you to a better place. In Mary's case, she actually conceived and was carrying the Messiah. But in our case, we conceive and carry the purposes of the Messiah. Some of you don't understand why you can look around and some people can praise God in the middle of the darkest days of their life. Let me tell you why they can praise God in spite of where they are. Because somewhere and sometime, the Holy Spirit of God birthed the praise down inside of them that the wind cannot put out, that the rain cannot stop, that the fire cannot cause to be destroyed. Because God, in the work and form of the Holy Spirit, birthed something inside of them. And they might be, st my goodness, I, I, this person's in the room. I'll never never forget walking up to the, a coffin as a young man and, and this lady was standing by her parents coffin and, and she was praising God and I said how can you praise God she said because I have a hope that I'm going to see them again because of what Jesus Christ has done even in the darkest days of your life when the Holy Spirit's done something in you you keep believing 
You keep moving forward. You keep pressing on toward the mark of the high call of Jesus Christ. Come on now, amen. A kingdom purpose has begun within you. A call of God begins to chase you. A dream comes alive within you. And the Holy Spirit of God bursts a desire for freedom inside of you. But this is what I came to tell you this morning. When you carry precious cargo, you're always going to face unforeseen obstacles. Let me tell you that again. When you carry precious cargo, you're always going to fight a battle. I'm tired of people telling me I don't want to get involved in the things of God. Every time I do, my life falls apart. Why? Because the enemy that's been ruling your life doesn't want God to do what he's doing inside of you. I'm preaching truth now. I got an amen from the right side. Can I get an amen from the left side? Come on, amen. God's doing something. And when you have precious cargo, I can tell you there's going to be bumps in the road. I came in this morning and I was talking with, with some of the team back here and Alyssa walked up and, and, and Alyssa and Paul were at a wedding yesterday and I, I said, hey, how'd the wedding go? And she said, well, it was, it was really, really nice. She said, I was lonely. I said, why were you lonely at the wedding? She said, well, Paul was in the wedding and I was in my seat. And I said, well, welcome to Christina's world for the last 30 years. Come on, amen. <laughs> I was get used to that. You're a pastor's wife. Come on. That's, that's life. That's what I'm thinking. Well, not too long ago, I went to a wedding and I wasn't doing the wedding. I was so excited. I was going to be super husband, and, and, and this doesn't really, really matter, but I was going to sit next to my lady. She was like, we're going to sit together. And I was excited. And we pulled up at this wedding, and when we pulled into the parking lot, that man sitting right there came running at my car. And all of a sudden, I look, and there is a car. If it was here, it was up like this, and the tires were spinning like this. And I said, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And they said, Pastor, that is the baker's car, and there's no wedding cake. And I thought about that family. And I thought, you know what? That family has served God around this house, one of, one of the members of that family, for over 20 years. I said, all right, come on, hop in the car. And we did it, didn't we? We hopped in the car. We took off. It was a 30-minute drive, roughly, to where we were going, and it was smooth. We got there, pulled up to the house, and, and it was just as easy. I thought, this is going to be simple. This is going to be easy. This is going to be fun. And all of a sudden, we go in, and we pick up the wedding cake, and I no more than pick it up, and it starts doo -doo 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 -doo, shaking like jello almost. I said, oh, God. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about the bride, and I'm thinking... She's going to kill him, not me. Come on now, man. <laughs> and so I carry it out to the car, and I set it in the car, and I put it in the car, and we position a few things around the car. We're glad to have some junk in the car. and position. We got it, we got it in place. And, and, and I want you to know I started praying. I hadn't prayed like that in a long time. Living God. <laughs> it was the easiest ride there. But on the way back, I promise you, every hill got ten times higher. Every curve got sharper. Every dog from the pit of Hades wanted to run out in front of us. <laughs> and people would just put on their brake lights. Come on now. And he, he's sitting over there, got half of it in his lap, and I'm looking in the mirror and praying. And, and, and finally, we had, to turn, we had to turn down a hill like this to get down in there. And I'm like, oh, Lord, God Almighty. And we made the turn and pulled up unloaded the cake set it in place it's looking beautiful and i walked down and i got to hear and i now pronounce you man and wife <laughs> i got the you left me alone again look but hey at least there's a cake right i tell you that story to tell you this it was easier when i didn't have the cargo but once i had the precious cargo the obstacles arose when God begins to do something down inside of you, that's precious cargo. And you're going to fight battles. You're going to fight struggles. You're, you're going to go through hard times. And Mary was no exception. I want you to realize what God had done. God called her. God chose her. She was special. I mean, people talk about her. We're talking about her today. I mean, it's amazing to her. But somebody please talk to her mama. Because that lady had had babies. She might have even been a grandmother. And she's been around a lot of people. She knows the sign of early pregnancy. Mary? Uh, we're going to have a talk when we get home. Mary's father finds out. 
Mother's taking it out on Mary, but her father finds out and he's going to take it out on Joseph. That no good for nothing, Joseph. In rage, he runs to Joseph's house, only to learn it's not Joseph's fault, so now his rage has turned to shame. And his rage turns to shame, and in the shame, he suddenly turns to worry because they had exchanged something called the mohar. And the mohar was the money that was to be given for the bride. And so, would they want to take that back? Because they had had a legal exchange, and maybe he'd already spent it, and now he's in shame, and he's in worry, and, 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 and it's all Mary's fault. And now, to top that off, Joseph's mama knows. Trust me, you can mess with me, but, but you better not do it when my mama's around. <laughs> you think that little lady's nice? Just mess with one of her boys. Come on now, amen. Amen. Whoo, goodness. Don't, don't mess with them. I'm looking at a little lady back there. Her boys out tower her a ton. But I, don't, nobody needs to mess with her boys. Come on now, amen. Listen to me. She was mad. She wanted Mary's head. Mary's future father-in-law just wanted the money back and her gone. And the town leaders wanted her stoned to death. Are you getting the picture? They have to send her away. They send her away to her cousin's house. Now here's where it starts getting good because God had done something in her cousin also and we know it's of God because, my goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit as I'm about to speak to you. The moment she walks through the door, what God was doing inside of her leapt and God began, began to move because she recognized somebody else that God was working in. When God's working in your life, you need to get around other people God's working in. And God begins to move. And she walks in, and her cousin says to her, How are you handling all this, Mary? And Mary says this verse, and Mary responded, Come on now, my soul does magnify the Lord. Now, here's where the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And the Holy Spirit began to say to me, he said, Son, what is she saying there? And, and, and I instantly began to know, because the soul is the mind, will, and emotion. She says, listen to what she says. She says, I know my world is a mess, but I'm all right in here. I know it doesn't look good out here, but I have a confidence inside of me. I have a joy inside of me. Why did she feel that way? That's when the Holy Spirit began to ask me. Why did she feel that way? Why did she rejoice at that moment? And why was she able to be strong when her world was a mess? Because, listen to me, she knew what God had done inside of her was greater than what was going on outside of her. And she knew that God was working in her and when it came to fruition, it would change everything outside of her. Now, I don't know who you are, but I've come to tell you, the battle is worth it. Let me tell you again, the battle is worth it. Keep pressing on, because when God has started moving in your life, you will fight hell. You will fight the devil. You will have struggles, but plant yourself and rejoice in the Lord, because the God who's working in you is greater than the enemy that's in the world. He's on your side. You're going over by the hand of God. Amen. You're going over. You've just got to get convinced what God's doing is greater than what the enemy's up to. And when you get convinced that what God is doing, things begin to change in you that will begin to change what's happening around you. I'm telling you, God gave me this message for you three weeks ago. And I feel it with all my heart today. You see, I'm going to give it to you again. I said it fast. She knew what had been conceived within her when birth would change all that was around her. Do you know when that was birthed, it didn't just change it for her, it changed it for us. Amen. Can I tell you what God's trying to do in you is not just going to change your life, but the people around you. Amen. Some of you, your family's waiting on you to get the breakthrough. There's this little scripture that says, may they be provoked to jealousy. Speaking of the Jewish people, may they be provoked to jealousy because of what God has done in us. May your family be provoked to jealousy because of what God is doing in you. May they begin to say, I don't know why God loves you so much. We're from the same family. Come on now, amen. And as you begin to respond, to say, well, I'm letting God work on the inside and he's just changing the outside. Amen. I feel this today. I feel it in my heart. Because God's purposes will change your life. 
God's purposes will change your life. Now I said, God, how do I get my mind in the right place? Now, is anybody else's world in chaos? Let me just see if I'm in the right place. Okay, good. I'm preaching the right people. God, how do I get my mind to that place? Luke, the same chapter, we find more about this. And Luke chapter 2, we find more about this. And in those two passages of Scripture, Luke 2, 19, excuse me, and Luke 2, 51, when we find these two passages, this is where the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me how you get your mind right when your world's in trouble. The Bible says in these verses, and Mary pondered these things in her heart. She treasured them up inside of her. So when somebody called her unfaithful, she heard the Lord say, highly favored. When somebody called her worthless trash, she heard the Lord speaking to her that she was the blessed of all women. Are, are, are you following where I'm going with this? All of a sudden, she began to rehearse on the inside of her what God had done and what God had said. Am I making sense to anybody today? Some of you believe the lie of the devil long enough. You believe the lie of your stepdad, your stepmom, your real dad, your real mom. You believe the lie of your ex-husband and, and, and the person who's never deserved to be your spouse. Come on now. You believe their lie long enough and you've lived in that lie long enough what you need to do is get a hold of the word of the living God where he calls you blessed and chosen and highly favored where he calls you his anointed children where he calls you kings and priests of this earth and as you begin to listen to what God says about you yes. the truth you ponder in your heart because the lie is what you hear in your ear but the truth rises up in your heart and things begin to change I want to hurry and bring this to a, a close today. Don't say amen because I said that before 12 o'clock. <laughs> Here's the thing. In order to get yourself in the right place, you need to have a place with God. Is that truth? In order... To get yourself in the right place, you need to have a place with God. Because most of us, instead of keeping it in our heart and just going forward, we've got to get the world to make us feel justified. You really only need one person on your side. We're not probably not going to air this, or if so, you need to edit this very, very well. You know, my first thought was, I'll put this phone number I don't know on Facebook. We'll find out who they are. They'll get 5,000 phone calls. Come on, amen. I'll find out who you are. But my second thought after I read this message let me respond right so what you're doing in here will be greater than what's happening out here I don't know what you're fighting anybody else got something going on in your job anybody got something going on in your family your world I don't know what you're fighting but I can tell you it's more about how you respond than what's happening around you. And he that has begun the good work in you is faithful to carry it through to his completion. You just got to get convinced what's in here is greater than what's out there. Stand with me today. Here's where you're going to really need to come to. The scripture says, she said, unto him Lord let it be done to me according to your word so in other words she trusted in the Lord and surrendered to his perfect plan I want to tell you what the greatest hindrance to my prayer life is are you ready for this I'm trying to get God to line up with my plan I spend 90% of my prayer life trying to say God shouldn't it be this way When somebody does you wrong, you, I mean, I, do you remember that story from the Bible? Edit this out. Do you remember that story from the Bible? 
when they came out and they made fun of the preacher because his head was bald and the bears come out of the wood and ate them? It's in the Bible. The bears come out of the woods and just consume the people that were mean. I was like, God, can you send me some bears? He said, bear your cross. Not your will, but his will be done. As you would, Lord, let it be done unto me. If you never use me again, as you would, let it be done unto me. According to God's will. God's plan. Some, <laughs> thought some of you already got the bears named. Come on, amen. I'd rather have the Holy Spirit in me than have justifiedness around me. Bow your heads with me. When I came to bring you this message, I thought I was coming in an evangelistic style. I did not know that I would be bringing you a message from a place of pain. But it doesn't change the message. God's working for your good. God's taking care of you. God loves you just the way you are. Father, you see every heart that's here and every life and every situation and we commit them solely unto you. You are faithful and you are good. God, right now, I ask you to begin to look into every heart that's here and begin to make connection with this truth that what you're doing in them is greater than what's happening around them. With every head bowed, I need to know who you are that's connecting with that truth right now. Can I see your hand? That's you. People all over this place. You can't change the diagnosis. You can't change the response. You can't change the way that the world is acting, but you can determine how you respond, and you can allow God to work in your life. Put those hands down. Thank you. God's working in people today. Let me just ask you in this service, some of you would say, Pastor, I want God to birth something in me, but I know that at first I've got to let some things go. There's some sins and struggles, and I've not been surrendered to Christ. Matter of fact, you're either going to rededicate your life to Christ or you're going to give your life to Jesus Christ right now. You're ready to take precious cargo into your life. That's, that you're ready to bring Jesus into who you are. Right now, right where you are. If that's you, I want to pray with you. God's going to change your life. The Holy Spirit's going to start in you what you can't do in yourself. Right now, right where you are, nobody looking around, everybody praying. If that's you, could I see your hand right where you are? Today, you want to give your life. Thank you. You want to give you your life. Thank you. Completely thank you to Jesus Christ. We have people giving their life and rededicating their life to Christ now. Are there others that will join with these three? This is the day. See, what the enemy thought he could take from us, God's, God's redeeming right now. All right, I want you to join hands with someone near you, if you would. The Bible says that as we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. We're going to pray with these that are committing their life to Christ right now. God's going to change them for all eternity. And then I'm going to pray for everyone that responded. Come on, let's all pray together by faith as we confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Because the Word teaches that. If we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead, we would be born again. Come on, let's pray this prayer with these three today. Jesus, by faith. I believe your promises. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I confess my faith in Christ. I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And now I receive your grace and your love. In Jesus' name, I am forgiven. I believe he came for me. He died for me, and now he lives for me. And by faith, from this moment forward, all that I have belongs to Jesus. And now, 
God is my Father. Heaven is my home. And Jesus is my Savior. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. 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 Hey, I'm going to pray for everybody else for just a quick moment. Lord, you see every hand that went up, every storm, every struggle. I pray. I thank you for the storm and I thank you for the struggle because it shows us what you're doing on the inside is really from you. In Jesus' name, bless them and prosper them. Amen.